We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These words from the Declaration of Independence are familiar to many of us, and yet it took 143 years for women to get the right to vote, and 189 years for black people to get the right to vote. And still today, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are still only words for many people. Here in Boston, Life expectancy varies by 30 years, depending on where you live. In Roxbury, with many poor and black people, life expectancy is 59 years. In the Back Bay, wealthy and mostly white, life expectancy is 91 years. It's tough to have liberty when you are in prison. The United States incarcerates 716 people for every 100,000 people. Our rate of incarceration is more than five times higher than most countries in the world. Millions of people in our country don't have health care, a decent job, good education, a home they can afford, and that makes it pretty hard to pursue happiness. So on this show, you are going to meet people who are making it possible to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. People today who are making the words of the Declaration of Independence come true. Hi, welcome. My name's Michael Jacoby Brown, and I'm your host today with We Hold These Truths. And today, we're really lucky and privileged and honored to have with us Carlos Soares, uh, who's a driver with some of these uh, rideshare companies uh, in Boston and really across the United States. Carlos, welcome. Thank uh, you. So it's really nice for you to come in today. I know you're busy because you're driving a lot. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background, where you were born, and what it was like while you were growing up? Uh, I was born in uh, Azores, Portugal, and um, I was there until the age of 14. And... Um, I seen a lot of struggles with my father when I was growing up. Uh, he lost his job, and uh, at one time he was sitting at the table crying, trying to figure out where to get money for food. Then we came to America, uh, and uh, he, we struggled in the beginning. It was only my father working. My mother had a hard time finding a job, but we managed to stay and, you know, make a living and uh, went to school and then I started working and I started seeing a lot of things uh, in a workplace that um, it's um, heartbreaking hmm. because uh, some people were making good money uh, because especially in the office and when it was to the workers uh, they were just making enough to get by. Hmm. Where was this? Where were you working when you saw that? Uh, I was working in a company in Rhode Island. Uh, I don't want to say the name, yeah. but uh, uh, they were the company was uh, the workers were making six twenty-five an hour, wow. uh, and uh, the CEO, the vice president of the company, was making three hundred thousand a year, and uh, had a one-month paid vacation to Europe, and we were trying to get a union in it to to help the workers. And they started telling things that, oh, you're averaging 14 bucks an hour because you get uh, paid holidays and you get uh, certain benefits. And But there was another company, one, uh, one city over, uh, that was doing the same thing we were, and the workers were making 14 bucks an hour. Hmm. So, you know, the, but the, the problem with that company was most of the workers were Portuguese and Hispanic didn't speak mm -hmm. much English, so they, they were lied to. And, and when it came time to the election for the union, the company the, said if you vote for the union, we're going to shut the doors down and move to North Carolina. Uh, and even though it's illegal to do that, but the workers didn't know because they don't speak English. Mm. They're immigrants. And, and they took advantage of the situation and lied to them. To, mm -hmm. So that, and then 30 days after that, not even 30 days after that, the, 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 the union lost the election, I got fired. Yeah, you got fired? Yeah. Because? 
because I was uh, fighting for the union. Mm -hmm. And where did you get those values for? You know, some people, you know, might just say, well, the hell with anyone else, I'll just get mine and I'll be okay. Um, uh, from my parents and religion, mm -hmm. I, I, I live by, I, am, I was born and raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and I live by the words of Jesus, uh, do unto others as you want done to yourself. Mm. So when I'm a, I'm a driver and I treat my customers like they are my friends, mm. and I respect them, and I try not to say anything to hurt their feelings of their nationality or religion, Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I, I kind of enjoy talking about mm. that stuff because I love history and geography. So mm. I'm always curious about what country they come from, what religion they are, and, mm. and their backgrounds. And that's why I've been a consistent five-star driver for a long time. Yeah. And how did you get interested in that, people's history and background, religion? I started uh, by watching the History Channel, the Learning Channel, and oh, I started right. getting mm. to learn about history. And then I, I find that... Uh, history is based on people, and huh. so I started finding that people are fascinating. You know, everybody yeah. we're all the same because we're all human. Yeah. But we are all different because right. we all have different backgrounds, different right. cultures, different beliefs, and yeah. I find that very fascinating. Yeah. And so uh, you've worked in the, those factories, and you've done other kinds of work now because you're. <laughs> You've been doing this. You've been working for quite a while. What else uh, have you done before you started driving? Oh, uh, wow. I got a long list. Uh, I'm a <laughs> so-called uh, jack-of-all-trades, master yeah. of none. Yeah. I've been um, a baker, a uh, line cook, a uh, construction, a CNC operator, a mill operator, wow. insurance salesman, financial advisor, truck driver, um, delivery driver. Uh, wow. And I, I love driving. And I, I love talking to people, so I guess this is the one that fits me because I always tell my customers, uh, I'm, I'm not working, I'm uh, getting paid to enjoy myself. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you still have to do a lot of work to get people from point A to point B oh, and yeah, and I, safely. I, and I keep the car always nice and clean. I go to yeah. the car wash almost every day. I vacuum wow. the car every day, and, and I wipe the, the seats and everything down every right. day. So, because... I got to present myself as a yeah. you know professional driver. And how did you get into uh, driving? I I started when I started driving a car and I started loving it. And then on uh, my days off, I would just get in the car and drive around uh, mm. to see areas. And and then uh, and and then I also one of the reasons uh, I I was happy to come to America because I had just seen the movie Smoke and the Bandit. <laughs> and I wanted to be a truck driver. Huh. And, and when I came to America, I, I actually went to a truck driver training school and oh, I really? drove a truck for a little while. Oh, really? And so you started driving how long ago for these uh, ride share companies? We won't really mention their names, although well, I started, you can if you want. <laughs> uh, I started driving with Uber part time in September of 17. Uh -huh. And I started driving with Lyft uh, part time uh, April of 18, but I went full time at the end of April of 2020. I found out I had uh, back problems and, uh, oh, really? huh. and my doctor said uh, it would be a good idea to change careers. Huh. And your back problem doesn't stop you from driving much? No, because I have control of my time. Okay. Uh, I can, uh, when I start getting uncomfortable, I can <laughs> shut up the app and, you know, stand outside the car, you know. It, Right. So, so what's been what it's been your experience driving for uh, Uber and Lyft? Uh, the best experience is meeting people, uh -huh. and I, I do make decent money. But uh -huh. uh, I think it could have been better, especially right now with the gas prices being so high. Right. It's um, like over five dollars an hour. Yeah. Five dollars a gallon. I mean. And I felt insulted when Uber and Lyft giving us like fifty-five cents per customer. Uh, per ride when sometimes we get a, an hour drive with customers and that's like 20, 30 miles. Could you explain that, giving 55 cents? What do you mean? For, uh, it's a, a gas surcharge per customer. Um, be, uh, the, because the gas prices is so high, they, they're trying to make it look good by giving us 55 cents extra per customer. Per ride? Per ride. Wow. So, and if you get a, if you get an hour ride per customer, it's like you, you're spending 
two or three gallons, so it's like you're losing money. Right, right. So uh, when it started, what was it like driving for them when you started four or five years ago and started uh, full-time a couple years ago? Well, when I was um, doing part-time, I was doing mostly in Rhode Island, and uh, the average pay was, if I average an hour, it would be like $15 an hour. Well, but then you have to keep up your car insurance, gas payments. Yeah, the good thing is uh, um, all of that is, um, you know, tax deductible, mm -hmm. the gas and all that stuff. <coughs> but but you have to put it out of your pocket when when you're driving, and you put a lot of mileage in your car, so you're putting a lot of wear and tear in your vehicle. So right. the car is not going to last as long as a, a normal person has. Right, you're, you're driving a lot. Now, Uber and Lyft are saying that you're an independent contractor. How, how do you see what you're actually doing? Are you really independent or? No. What, what's it really like to be in the driver's seat? Uh, well, I'm not an independent contractor because an independent contractor, when you go bid for a job, you control how much you're going to get paid. Hmm. We don't control how much we get paid. We don't control, um, it's like if, if we choose not to get a customer, if we cancel the ride, they threaten us to, they threaten you? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, they they send a message through the app that oh you uh, you've canceled the ride. You got to you know you um, if you cancel too many times, you'll be deactivated. What does that mean? Be deactivated. It, it means they will that? shut you off and you will no longer be able to drive. Hmm. Wow. I mean, if you're an independent contractor, you, you should have the right to choose and you, how much you get paid and, and everything. The only thing I have control is when to turn on the app and when to shut off the app. Right. Other than that, I have no control of anything. So right. I'm not exactly an independent contractor. Right. So how, how would you like it to be? I mean, as a, as a driver, you, you're not really, you say you're not really an independent contractor. Uber and Lyft say you are. What, what's, what's really going on here? Uh, they want to keep us as independent contractors because that way they... Uh, not responsible for, uh, like, to help us with medical insurance, paid sick leave, mm. vacation time, which is something that there's a group of us called Massachusetts Driver United. Mm. Uh, we're working on it. To, to, we want to have uh, a thing called the uh, Driver's Bill of Rights. Mm. So we can have those rights. And they say if, if they make us, like, having all those rights, they're going to make us employees, which... Uh, going to have to have a set schedule. That's not true because they just use that as an, ex an excuse because if they can come up with an algorithm to, to have drivers to pick up customers and all that, right. they can keep track of what the drivers work and depending on how many hours you work a week, you qualify for benefits. Mm -hmm. and, and you still be able to have you know, flexibility of time. Mm -hmm. But because most of the drivers are recent immigrants and they don't know the laws and they it, mm. so they lie to them and because they're a corporation they are to make money so they don't care about the drivers they if, if they if you're not making money for them they'll shut you off mm. what what makes you say they don't care about the drivers where have you seen that just well the, when uh, the pandemic started happening, they were saying, if the drivers get, uh, continue driving, if you get sick, we'll, we'll give you medical leave uh, oh, really? late. Uh, in, the, in December uh, 2020, I was in a hospital. Oh, yeah. And then I was home for another, uh, almost two weeks, and then I was home for uh, another four weeks. With COVID? With or? COVID. Uh-huh. And... For that whole time, they gave me two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars was your health weeks. benefit for six weeks. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't yeah, and, and I have to pay insurance, uh, health insurance, out of my pocket. Well, actually, unfortunately, I have to depend on uh, Mass Health, which I don't think it's fair. The taxpayers have to help oh, me right. get medical insurance when these companies are making millions of dollars of profit a year if wow. not billions. And, how, and they tried to pass a referendum like the one they tried recently in Massachusetts in 
California. And how much did they spend on the advertising in California? Do you know? Uh, from what I heard on the news, they spent two hundred million dollars, two hundred twenty million dollars in California. In yeah. California, and they spent already close to twenty million dollars over here in Massachusetts to pass this referendum. Uh, yeah, and the, which the Supreme Court knocked it down, saying was unconstitutional. The Massachusetts Supreme yeah. Court. Yeah. So. Well, they, but they're going to come back and try to pass something else. They're going to change the words and make it look good, and uh, because mm -hmm. they they're going to try, you know, they want to make a profit, and they don't care wh where they get it from. Mm -hmm. It's it's like uh, that movie Blood Diamonds, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't care about the workers; they care about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we need to have a voice. We need to you know, have the Driver's Bill of Rights. Right, and what would be in that Driver's Bill of Rights from, you know, you're a driver, you're in the driver's seat. What would you like to well, see for, for uh, yourself and other rideshare drivers? Um, paid sick leave. I mm -hmm. mean, if you average 40 hours a, a week, you know, whatever you average for, for that 40 hours, you should get, you know, paid sick leave. Mm -hmm. uh, help with medical in insurance. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I'm not saying 100% paid, but, you know, make it easy for us to, to have insurance without having to depend on the government. So you actually, I and other taxpayers are subsidizing My health Uber insurance. and Lyft because you, you have to be on mass health, which we subsidize. So in a sense, we're subsidizing Uber and Lyft yeah. to make profit. Interesting. Yeah. Because you are many drivers, as far as you know, on mass health or... or um, I, I don't know, but uh, I heard there's 200,000 drivers in Massachusetts. Wow. And at least half of them uh, should be full-time. So, mm -hmm. And if they, if they don't have other insurance, they, and because in Massachusetts mandatory insurance, they're mm -hmm. going to end up being on mass health. Mm -hmm. So what else would you like to see in a driver's bill of rights? Um, paid vacation, you know, like mm -hmm. do a PTO where you, if you work so many hours per year, you qualify for a week or two week paid vacation. Mm -hmm. So we can have a, a normal life like everybody else mm -hmm. instead of working seven days a week, to, uh, 52 weeks a wow. year. You're working seven days a week, 50, yep. wow. And, and tell me about this deactivation. What, what's going on? You say you can be deactivated if you uh, refuse a certain customer or? Well, or <coughs> if you cancel a few times, they, they threaten you with deactivation. <coughs> and if the customer complains, even, with, if, even if it's not true, they deactivate you. Like a couple times I got deactivated. One time really? I had a call for Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. And um, I, I got there, I push arrived, and the customer wanted to cancel the, the ride, and, but he didn't want to pay the cancellation fee, so they, they sent a message to the company saying I was not wearing a, a mask because at the time it was mandatory because oh. of COVID. And they deactivated for four hours. I was deactivated this, um, because I had to convince them, you know, it's like I always wear a mask. Right, and, right. And, and uh, even now when it's not mandatory, when I'm driving, I wear a mask. Right, and this customer lied and, and said... So, yeah, so he, so he didn't have to pay the cancellation fee. Right, and do you have any recourse? Is there any, uh, like, well, it was impartial busy. appeal that no, you can appeal? It's no, the only reason they put me back on was because I threatened with a lawyer. Oh. How many people do you think would know to say something like that? You're, uh, I, I don't think, I don't think, you tell me what you think. I don't think too many people would um, would do that. And I don't, I don't know, but uh, that's... I, uh, that's one of the, the way I, I, I try to, you know, fight back because we right. have no other recourse. You have no other recourse. And uh, I know you're working to try to form some kind of organization or union of drivers. Can you tell me a little bit about that, what the, how uh, you're doing that? Yeah, we're called the Massachusetts Drivers United, and we um, also uh, work with other groups mm -hmm. who are trying to like I said, pass the Bill of Rights, and uh, we're trying to, once we get that, we're going to try to see if we can have a union so we can have mm -hmm. a voice. Uh, one of the things we want is uh, have an independent uh, review board when a driver gets canceled, you know, 
have a review to, to see why you got canceled. If he got canceled because he did something wrong, then by all means, yeah, deactivate him, you know, mm -hmm. shut him off. Mm -hmm. But if he didn't do anything wrong, then he should not be, he should be back on the app and, and compensated for the time loss. Right, so Lyft is saying, or Uber is saying they'll do that, but it won't be run by the state, it'll be run by Uber and Lyft. I mean, if they have a... They, they say, now they say that we, ha we can argue uh, if we get shut up, but unless you threaten them with a lawyer, you don't get, right. you, you don't get uh, activated again. Because right. I, I was at a hub one time, um, and this driver uh, was uh, asking, how long am I going to be deactivated? And they said, well, you complain too many times, so w you shut up per for life. No, really? No more. Because the driver complained? Complained too many times or shut up. Uh, uh, I didn't exactly hear uh, the problem, but uh, from right. what I heard was uh, the girl saying was he, got, he complained too many times. Wow. And uh, she started saying other stuff, but I didn't quite hear the rest. Right. And, and what would you like customers, I mean, people like me that occasionally, or people that use Uber Lyft, what would you like them to know about you and perhaps other drivers? Um, we, we are, you know, we are here trying to make a living for our families and, mm -hmm. and trying to do the best we can. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, just like in every other industry, you know, there are, there are good drivers and there are bad drivers. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of us are pretty good uh, people mm -hmm. and some of us are quiet, some of us talk too much. You're laughing, right? Yeah, I, I'm one of them that talk too much. No, well, you talk just enough, I think, Carlos. That, that's great. Is, is there anything else you think the public should know about uh, what it's like from your seat and the driver's seat? Um, it's uh, sometimes it can be dangerous, hmm. and sometimes it can be a good experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I've been lucky. I've done between. My all my accounts, I've done uh, over nine thousand rides. Wow, nine thousand rides! Wow. And I, I'd say, ninety-nine point nine percent of the, my customers have been good people. Wow. wow but I, I treat people with respect. I treat people like they are my my friends, my family. Mm -hmm. So I try to do the best I can for them. Yeah. I provide service. Yeah. So I think this whole idea of the gig economy, you know, uh, there's other there's. Uh, all these other people that are being tried to be made into uh, independent contractors. It could be teachers, nurses, doctors, lawyers. I think in a lot of ways, a lot of corporations would like to uh, get rid of the requirement that they pay things you want, like vacation, health care, sick time, those kinds of things. Uh, uh, how, how, how do you see it? Do you see that happening, or I, I see it happening in California right now. The mm -hmm. nurses are fighting to to stay as employees instead of uh, gig mm -hmm. workers because then they lose benefits. And, and I also heard that uh, restaurants are trying to do the same thing. To, mm -hmm. uh, so with the waitresses, even though they are already don't make much, you know. So the, these companies are seeing what Uber and Lyft is doing and trying to do to. So if this keeps going, every company is going to be doing the same thing, and then they're going to get away with making a lot of profit and not paying their share. And then the taxpayers are the ones who are going to have to pay for health benefits. Right. So if more people become, quote, independent gig workers, gig workers that could be the future of work. Where If, if uh, Uber and Lyft keeps uh, passing these laws, yes. So we need to stop them. We need to... To, you know, it's. I understand companies need to make a profit to stay in business, but they need to take care of their drivers because we're the ones who make money for them. Right. If they don't, if they don't have drivers, they not, they're not going to be able to make money. Right. But they have so much. Um, you know, a lot of people so much want to do uh, driving because they like the, the. Uh, flexibility mm -hmm. so they don't care if some drivers quit right. and, and so they just they think we are disposable
They think you're disposable. Well, Carlos Sars, you're not disposable. And I don't think anyone is. Uh, but I'm really glad you were able to come on the show. Uh, I just want to thank you. I don't know if there's any last thing you want to say, because we just have a minute or so left that you think the public uh, should know about your experience or what Uber, Lyft, and other rideshare companies are trying to do here? Um, we, we, need to have, we need to be able to, to tell our um, congressmen and re representatives that we need to have a law to protect the drivers and make, them, make us um, have benefits. Right. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Carlos. I think uh, what Carlos uh, is pointing out that not only Uber and Lyft and other, quote, gig workers now need benefits. The economy is not what it was 100, almost 100 years ago in the 1930s when the labor laws were established. Things are different now. So I really appreciate your coming on our show. We hold these truths to explain what it's really like to be a rideshare driver in 2022 and in the years ahead. And uh, I just really appreciate your, your coming here. Thanks yeah, a lot, Carlos. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm here. And again, I'm Michael Jacoby Brown. I'm your host of uh, We Hold These Truths. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, it's uh, Mass Drivers United. Is that the organization that you're working with? You can yep. find them, I assume, on that thing called the internet. <laughs> That thing which some of us know about. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything else you wanted to say before we close off? Um, no, I just... no. No, I appreciate your explaining what it's really like to be in the driver's seat. So again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, I'm Michael Jacoby Brown. I'm your host of We Hold These Truths, and we were lucky to have Carlos Sars, uh, our guest, who's a uh, rideshare driver, with us today. And thank you very much for looking in. And we hope to see you next time we're on the air. And thanks to Arlington Community Media and all the wonderful people who are here for making all this possible. Thanks a lot.